That's right guys, we did it. We invented Upside Down Spleef. Now this game is just like regular Spleef, except that you're hanging from the ceiling. So you can run around and try to open up the trapdoors to knock people down. If you're the last one surviving, you win. And the great thing is, the trapdoors reset with just a push of a button and you're ready to play again. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to build the Upside Down Spleef course, as well as how to play the game. That way, you can get going with your friends right when you're done with the video. Oh! I'd just like to make a quick disclaimer before the video begins. I am pretty sure that this bug was patched in the most recent 1.17.10 update, which means that this minigame most likely won't work for you at all, which really stinks. But the tutorial is still really cool and interesting, so please continue watching. So this is the upside down spleef arena. Now this can come in a lot of shapes and sizes. I've decorated it to look like this, but it can look basically however you want. Now, we've got it over a void here, which is great for a creative, but if you're playing on survival, feel free to put water or something at the bottom, that way it's less deadly. This build is super easy to make, and you'll find that this tutorial is going to be super simple to follow. Today I've got my brother Nomadic Waffle here to help me out in demonstrating some things and building during the tutorial, so let's get right into it. Waffle here is on survival, and he's going to help me demonstrate the bug that is used to fly in the game. As many of you probably noticed, when we're swimming across the ceiling like that during the gameplay footage at the beginning of the video, it looked a whole lot like crawling. I'm sure that many of you know what crawling is, but just in case you don't, I'm going to demonstrate it real quick with Waffle here. So basically, the way that crawling works is if you are swimming and you enter a one by one hole, you can remain in a swimming position such that you crawl through the one by one space without suffocating or standing up or anything. So if I come in here and I swim, you can see I am now crawling underneath this platform that I built here to demonstrate. Now there's nothing buggy about crawling. It's a completely intended game mechanic that Mojang wanted to be in the game. The bug comes in when there isn't a floor underneath you while you crawl. So I'm going to build this little platform here so that Waffle can demonstrate what I mean by this. So if Waffle enters the water source there and swims out underneath here, he does not need the floor to actually continue crawling. It uses the ceiling to say that, ah, he's still in the same spot, so he can continue crawling. And he can stay like that as long as he wants, as long as he doesn't look down. Looking down breaks the crawling effect because it's almost like realizing, oh, I'm not actually on top of anything. It's kind of like in a cartoon where the character runs off a cliff and then realizes at the last second, they look down and just plummet. So it's the same sort of thing. Waffle, would you mind looking down real quick? And you fall. Now, if the ceiling above you breaks, you will also fall. So that's basically how the mechanics behind Upside Down Spleef works. We use the crawling bug in order to crawl around on the ceiling, and then opening the trapdoors removes the space above us and we fall. So the goal is to swim around and open up the trapdoors above the other player's head. Now let's get on to the tutorial so that you guys can build your very own upside down spleef arena. So the first thing that you want to do is grab a temporary block. We grabbed wood here, you could use stone, dirt, whatever you want, and tower up to the height that you want the base of your mini game to be played on. Once you've reached a height that you like, go ahead and start building the shape of the arena that you want to build. For this tutorial, we're going to be doing squares mostly. Specifically, we're doing a 17 by 17 square here, but you can make it any shape you want. You could do a circle, you could cut a hole out of the middle to make a donut. You could make it the shape of the state of Texas. It's whatever you guys want. Now, I recommend 
that you do a 15 by 15 square. I said that we're doing a 17 by 17 square here, but that is not what you guys are going to want to do. The easiest way to follow the tutorials with a 15 by 15, we realize that later and try to adapt, but I recommend a 15 by 15 square for the easiest way to follow the tutorial, but you can make it whatever shape you want. The basics for this tutorial are really simple, so once you get them down, you can make it however you want to make it, really. And once you've got your shape all filled in, you can go ahead and mine that tower that is supporting it. Now you're going to start covering the entire shape in trapdoors. This can be any sort of trapdoor you want, but I highly recommend the birch trapdoor because it is so light. Since you play underneath the arena, it can get really dark under there, so I highly recommend a lighter trapdoor, such as the birch trapdoor, just to keep it looking nicer and brighter in there. You want to lay down the trapdoors such that they are all facing the same direction, that'll make it a lot easier later. Now you can go ahead and build up with your temporary blocks two blocks above the trapdoor level. You can mine that underneath block and begin filling in your shape again. This tutorial takes a lot of temporary blocks and can be a little bit tedious to put down, but it's really simple. And the reason you need to put these two platforms of temporary blocks is because of the way that directional blocks need to be placed. So once you have your second platform of temporary blocks placed down, you can go ahead and mine the underside temporary block platform. This will leave the trapdoors exposed from underneath. Also, try really hard not to mine any of the trapdoors just because then you have to go back and fix it. And now that the trapdoors are exposed from underneath, you can go ahead and start opening all of them. This does take a little bit of time, but it'll make it a whole lot easier to do the next step. And since you placed all of the trapdoors down in the same direction, when you look at it from the side, you should see open rows. In these open rows, you can move down and place observers on the temporary blocks above. The reason we have the temporary blocks is so that you can place the observers facing the right direction. You should see that they are pointing upward with the redstone signal coming out of the bottom. So you should see a red dot on the underside of all of these observers. And that red dot should be pointing straight into the trapdoors underneath them. This is the key component of the system that resets all of the trapdoors when you are ready to reset the arena. Once you get your entire shape covered in observers, you should have a three layer shape with trapdoors underneath, observers above that, and temporary blocks on top. Now you can go ahead and mine all of the temporary blocks above the observers. When you do this, the observers should notice a block change and output a redstone signal. That redstone signal should return the trapdoors to their closed position. So as you mine off all of the temporary blocks, all of the trapdoors should close. And now that all you have remaining is a layer of trapdoors and observers, you can begin decorating it. Now we actually did end up using birch planks to decorate it, just because we thought they looked nice. But what you're going to do is place blocks all around the observers, and then one layer underneath that, so all around the trapdoors. This should close in the entire system pretty much. And then you can go ahead and place two more layers underneath. For those two layers, I recommend using some sort of light source block, such as a redstone lamp, a sea lantern, or glowstone. We use sea lanterns here just because I think they look a little bit better than the redstone lamp and the glowstone. But the reason that you do these two layers in a light source block is so that you get it kind of lit up underneath that arena. Now you can go ahead and place a layer of whatever decoration block you want on top of the outer layer. And then as you can see in the video here, the next step is to place an L on each of the corners. This is just made out of three blocks with one on the corner and one on either side. And this will be used once again for the redstone of the project. At this point, you can decorate your arena however you want. We went for a bit of a lush theme here by putting some vines and glowberry vines hanging down from underneath the arena. You can also put whatever you want underneath the arena at this point, whether it be lava or water. Now it's time to work some more on the circuitry. So in the corner of each L, you're going to place water source just like this, then swim into it and as you move up, place a dispenser right there in the corner where the water was. Now this is so that the dispenser is facing down. There's no real easy way to do this without mining the observers. You can do it that way if you want, 
but I found this to be the quickest way to do it. It was just to place water, swim into it such that you're only one block tall, and then as you look up, place the dispenser really quickly. Now you need a dispenser facing down in all four of the corners, so go ahead and repeat that step everywhere. And now you need to find the center of the arena, wherever that is. This is for if you're doing a square. Go ahead and place a platform extending out to the center. You wanna make sure that that is one block above the observers such that there is a space and then place a dispenser right in the middle facing down. Now go ahead and place a water bucket in each of the dispensers. These dispensers will be used to place the water which the observers will notice and that will send a redstone signal and reset the trap doors. If you aren't doing a square shape, what you can do is just place dispensers wherever you need around the top of your arena, such that when all of them have placed their water, the entire area is covered in water. So now you're going to build the entrance to your arena. Cut a 3x3 three three hole on the bottom level of your arena. I recommend putting this at one of the corners, that way it's kind of out of the way, but put it wherever you want. Once you have that, place a button on the top layer of your arena above the door. The next step is to place redstone dust on top of the entirety of the arena. This does not include the observers, but make sure you put redstone dust on top of all of your edge blocks as well as the dispensers. Now to test the system, go ahead and crouch on top of your platform and place a redstone block on top of the button. This should light up the redstone. Wherever you see the bright red of the redstone fading, go ahead and place a redstone repeater there. This will extend the redstone signal and do that around the entire arena until all of your dispensers have placed their water. At this point, you can tell whether or not your dispensers cover the entirety of the arena. And we realized here that a 17 by 17 arena was just slightly too big. This is why I recommended earlier that you guys go with a 15 by 15 arena. That will cover the entire area with just five dispensers. Luckily, we had an easy fix to this problem. We just built up a little bit and then placed a block underneath the water to disperse it across the rest of the observers. As you can see by the arena that we had built at the beginning of the tutorial, all that matters is that the dispensers cover the entirety of the observers in water. And now that the redstone signal will reach all of the dispensers, go ahead and click the button a couple times. You should notice that the water extends across all of the observers. When you click it again, it should retract all of the water. And every time you do that, you should be able to see all of the trapdoors flipping at least once. This will completely reset the board every single time you press the button. Next to your door, place down a 3x5 platform of any building block that you want. Make sure not to place any blocks inside the 3x3 hole that we made though. Now place a 2x3 wall on either side of the opening. It should look like this and leave you with a one block wide corridor. Now place a trapdoor on the bottom side of the top block such that it is at the same level of the rest of the trapdoors there. Now go to the inside and place another trapdoor on the inside of that. You might have to place a temporary block, that way you can crouch. And the handles should be facing each other. This is that when you play the game, you can open that trapdoor, thus closing off the entrance area. Now place two signs coming off of the wall on the inside of the arena. These should extend such that the furthest inward sign is blocking the one by one hole. Now place two more signs on the other side of the wall. This will contain all of the water and stop it from flowing out the other side. Now you can take a water bucket and place water in the top block on the other side of those signs. It should flow down and underneath the trapdoor there, but not flow all the way into the arena. I recommend placing a bed near the entrance, that way you can quickly get back into playing. When one of you dies, you'll just respawn right there. You can also place a chest to put any of your belongings in. Now make sure you can access the entrance to your arena, so we built a little staircase here. You can do this however you guys want. And the build is now completely finished. You have the entrance that allows you to get into a swimming position to do the bug, and then you also have the resetting trapdoor floor. As I've said before, I highly recommend you decorate it, make it look really unique. These can look really cool when they're completely finished. 
I'm really happy with the way this lush one turned out. If you guys end up building an upside down spleef arena, please send a picture of it in my Discord server. I'd love to see what you guys come up with. So that completes the tutorial for today, guys. Um, now you know how to build a super awesome looking upside down spleef arena. Now we literally just learned a minute ago that they patched this bug in the newest 1.17.10 update for Bedrock Edition. This is very, very frustrating as we've been working on this tutorial for a while and the update literally just came out. But the great news is that this game will still work in previous versions of the game. Just make sure you are before 1.17.10 and the upside down spleef will work for you. There are basically limitless possibilities as to how you can make your spleef arena look. So I'm super excited to see what some of you guys come up with. Even though I am disappointed about the bug patch, it is what happens with bugs. So it was gonna happen sooner or later. This video was super fun to film because I basically got to just sit back and watch as Waffle did all of the building. So thank you very much Waffle for helping me out with this video. Sure thing. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Also, before you go, check out this awesome Huganu animation created by Jellybean Guy. He's one of the members of my Discord server and I just thought it was so cool I had to share with you guys.